Hi everybody, uh, good morning and welcome to this week's webinar from Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland. And this week we are going to be talking to Jennifer Cody Murphy. Welcome Jennifer, thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Jennifer is the owner of Utilicious in Waterford, yeah. which is, uh, am I right in saying like a holistic health and beauty salon? That's it, yeah, with a yoga studio as well, yeah. yeah. So um, we're going to be talking about the lovely topic of uh, self-care in advance of reopening. So it's aimed at all of you, you know, hairdressers, therapists, you know, nail technicians, everybody across the board who is more than likely looking at, you know, going back to work in, um, Jennifer and I were just discussing it there, we think maybe, hopefully the 29th or else the following week, so very soon. So we're going to talk about, I suppose, how uh, you can get into that self-care mode before you get back to work. So I will just, I suppose, I'll kick off there, Jennifer, by asking you, um, you know, first of all, how can everybody, you know, the salon owners and all the employees, staff, everybody, um, try to prepare their bodies from going, for going back to work, like easing into, you know, being back on their feet, because like, let's face it, you know, we've had three months over three months probably of, I'm not suggesting anybody was lying down for three months, but you know, <laughs> not not doing what they were used to doing, you know, before lockdown. So uh, yeah. how do you think, yeah, they can prepare their bodies? To prepare your body first, you need to figure out where your body is. How are you feeling in your own body right now? Check in with your breath, you know, and the first observation, where am I, is breath? Is it in my chest? Can I go to my diaphragm? Is it going down to the end of my belly? And usually right now, because there's so much overwhelm, there's so much preparation, we're on high alert, there's clients starting to text in already, looking for appointments and treatments, that the buildup is there. And first off is acknowledge where you're feeling. Where is, what does your body feel like? Do you have a knotted feeling in your stomach? Is there a tightness in your chest? So just acknowledge that first, so then you can work with it. Okay, so if you check in with your breath, if it's caught in your chest and it feels tight and tense, then your body's going to flick into fight or flight mode very quickly. So you want to acknowledge that so you can counterbalance it. So you can bring yourself into a good place of calmness where you can be at ease and prepare in a really fabulous way with an easeful way rather than overwhelming way where it can take over. So ask yourself, how does this feel? All this overwhelm that's around and preparing and changing and setting up new um, routines and setting your business in a different way with you know, all the hygiene products that we need to use and be mindful of. Um, but how are you first and foremost? And the first way to acknowledge is your breath. Am I breathing? Where is it? Can I lengthen it? And there is a fabulous technique that I use and I use which a majority of my clients and students that come to yoga is a so hum breath that it just helps guide the breath down and it sends an automatic message to your subconscious mind allowing you to be calm and peaceful and relaxed so it's an inhale and in your mind just whisper the word so on the inhale and hum on the exhale and my said totally ridiculous but it is such a powerful powerful technique and starting there, first and foremost, then you can work through anything else. And it really helps push through, release the tightness in the chest, or releases the knotted sensation in the belly or the dreaded feeling at the end of the belly. And it just brings your mind into more of a calm um, place. So okay. first and foremost, check in with yourself. How does your body feel? And then you're going to begin to establish a routine by getting up early in the morning, already preparing, rather than waiting for the 20 mile. <laughs> getting up, simple things like making the bed, having breakfast, because you're already starting your day in a positive way then. It's an accomplishment. You made the bed. It might sound some ridiculous as well, but these small little uh, troops every day, each moment that you're acknowledging, you know, I got up, I made the bed. I didn't snooze 10 times over and stay in it. I got up and it's already a positive start that you're accomplishing things. So you want to set your day in a positive way. And being in work ahead of time to be prepared, so you're not rushing in the door and your client's already 
uh, sitting outside in the car so that you're prepared in advance and start the next couple of days by getting up earlier than you have been for the last couple of weeks possibly. Yeah. Okay and um, sorry I just wanted to ask you there when you were talking about the breath um, you know yeah. you hear that expression a lot like you know bring it back to your breath to calm yourself when you talk about that that method um, do you uh, tell people or suggest to people that they breathe in through their nose and out through their mouth or do they keep it within the nose and out the nose? Does it make a difference for calming? Yeah, the difference with that is the out through the mouth is releasing. Okay. So if you're feeling anxious and overwhelmed, you want to release that out. So that's imperative that the exhale is out through the mouth. If you're in a good place and you want to energize yourself even more, you can continue the breath in through the nose and out through the nose. That's more of an energizing breath, but the overwhelm and the stress needs to be out of the way first. So okay. definitely runs a release and that's for the breath. Yeah. Okay. That was just something I wondered about myself actually when you were talking there. Um, so yeah, so like the, that's very good advice about getting up the, um, early and, and starting the day as if you were going to work. And mm -hmm. I suppose just leading on to my next question there about like going forward, how do people avoid things like muscle strain? And um, you know the way like if you've not been standing up every day for the last three months, the way you'd be standing up yeah. and work, is there a way to kind of, I know it's not probably completely pre preventative, but a way to kind of ease your muscles? Yeah, even gentle yoga, you know, there's numerous um, online, now even to five, six minutes of yoga in the morning. On your lunchtime break, just do another couple of stretches is really great. The biggest, with muscle fatigue and muscle tension and tiredness is, is either you're not breathing because your muscles, your legs are getting tired because your breath is caught in your chest and your, your extremities, like your feet, your legs, your arms, your hands, aren't getting the oxygen that it needs. So they will tense and tighten a lot more. So smiling is the quickest way that we can do to release tension. And it's, <laughs> it is so powerful to smile and so, Check in with yourself numerous times of the day. Am I breathing correctly? Am I smiling? And just doing that instantly, you can make a change. And then obviously, you, do, you know, yoga, you're eating properly, drinking plenty of water, that everything is moving and flowing and it's not getting stuck or stagnant. And that will um, prevent muscle ease and tiredness and tension. So. Okay. Yeah. And then the, you know, I will for right now as well, uh, how would people prepare mentally for this, you know, reopening? Um, mm -hmm. It's one thing to have, you know, I know that the, it's all connected anyway, the mind and the body, but I suppose to focus on the mind part. I think focus on the mind that you're remembering that you're doing a vital service. You're helping someone feel good about themselves. You're raising their, you know, their self-esteem. And by doing that, you're raising your own self-esteem. And it's to know that you are essential as well. There's been so much talk about essential workers and, you know, some people might feel that they're not as essential as others. And we are. If we do a vital role, you know, you're really impacting somebody's day. You're impacting somebody's life. Because the good treatment that they receive while they're with you, they carry that with them. They take that. They bring it home. They share it with their family. They share it with their friends that they encounter with. So if you're in a really good positive mindset, then you can exuberate that out to your clients. And then they in turn take that home. So it has a ripple effect, um, which is really positive. And it's how, having that interaction with your client is, am I in a good place? Am I breathing right? Am I like a guidance for them? As I, that's one thing I notice when clients come into the salon, they walk in the doors like this, big <sighs> exhales, like they've yeah. held their breath for so long. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, I can relax. And even if it's just having your eyebrows done, you want to create the most um, fabulous, tranquil place that you can, where people can offload and can release that tension that they've been holding, unbeknownst to them mostly. You know, and even for yourself as a therapist, is checking and saying, am I listening to the news in the background all day? Is a radio blast and, you know, is this something that's impacting me? Could I change the music? Would it make a difference if I turned off the news? Would it make more of a, a relaxing environment where you're escaping for that little bit? So all the conversation isn't around what's going on in the world. All the conversation isn't around stress, tension, worry, fear, you know, and sickness, death, anxiety. 
that you're having that little escapism. So it's given yourself and your client the opportunity to release and balance out and counterbalance the stress and tension they've been holding and carrying. So, yeah. Okay, and then just kind of along that note as well, like, you know, say again, um, we're talking about possibly, you know, a week and a half to go, maybe two weeks. Um, if somebody is, is, you know, in the zone or whatever and they're getting everything ready, but like, it's, yeah. you know, let's be honest, it's been such a strange time. I mean, there's no other word for it really, only strange. Yeah. I mean, you know, this has never happened to us before. I mean, somebody was saying to me, Yesterday, I think it was the day before, it was a, a hairdresser in Dublin and he said, you know, like yeah. we've had a, a, a once in a lifetime experience or something. And I was like, well, I hope it was a once in a lifetime. Hopefully you know, like, a like, like, If anything ever happened again, anyway, it would be, we'd be, di we'd be differently prepared for it. Like this, we were very unprepared for it. And, you know, it's like, it's, yeah. it's just been such a strange time. It's been challenging for everybody. So if somebody is, you yeah. know, is there, are there signs? That they need to look out for as they get nearer to the opening date and like if they spot themselves feeling any sort of mental strain like how do they deal with it and um to ensure that like when they reopen that they're not feeling the strain the same way because like i think everybody is going to be feeling something along the lines Absolutely. of mental strain i Absolutely. mean you have to be made yeah. stone not to yeah the thing is to acknowledge how you're feeling, acknowledge how your client is feeling, and then notice where you're at. How is this helpful? Am I feeding fears that are making me feel worse, or am I addressing them and working with them and turning that fear and that anxiety around into enthusiasm? You can look at things in different ways. Yes, this pandemic is there. Yes, there's great fear and great anxiety. Is it something that you need to absorb in? Is it like a real fight or flight danger for you in that moment? Or are you absorbing it in? How can I protect myself on a level where I'm not getting overwhelmed, where I can acknowledge the fear and anxiety? You're taking the precautions, you're doing, you're following the guidelines, so know that. You're following the guidelines, you're taking the measures. There, you have the precautions set on a physical level. Do the same on, with yourself on, on a personal, physical, mental, and emotional level. Like we're surrounded by colds and flus and um, like tummy bugs and stuff the whole time. And it's how do you feel about that? And one, the, one fabulous technique that I learned when I did my training in Hawaii was to put like almost like an energetic protection there that you feel like, okay, I'm doing this job for a reason. I've been guided here to do this wonderful job to serve people, to help them build their self-esteem, to help myself as well. And how can I feel and give myself wholeheartedly to my position without feeling afraid of picking anything up or taking something in, that you're feeling, um, you're feeling safe. And when I did that almost 10 years ago, I haven't once had a cold, a flu, a tummy bug. Now, obviously this is on a whole greater level, but the principles are still the same. Where is your belief? Do you believe you're gonna be sick and surrounded and take it, you know, you're gonna catch every cold and flu that's going or every tummy bug that your client possibly has? Or do you feel that, you know, I'm here to in a good place and I'm in sound of mind and body that I can do my job with ease and joy and happiness and transfer ease, joy and happiness to clients and hopefully alleviate them of fear and worry as well. But that you're in a nice, confident place where you feel, do you know what, I feel, I feel safe, I feel resilient, I'm well, I'm happy, I'm focusing on my health, my vitality, I'm checking in with my breath, I'm checking in with my body. If anything begins to tense and tighten, I acknowledge it so I can work through it and it's not building and festering. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like um, if somebody, like, say, right now today is, is feeling stressed, it's like, yep. don't feed the stress, like, focus on, it's again, it's a little bit, I suppose, like, focusing on the solution rather than the problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You're acknowledging where you're at, and you're acknowledging, and then you're finding that solution so you can change. It's like gear in a conversation if you find that, you know, we're therapists for, for a reason and on many levels. People offload. People will tell you so much things that are going on with them and in their mm -hmm. lives 
which is, you know, it, which is fabulous in a way that it's, you know, it's helping them to, to find the solace that they need and peace of mind, but it can spill over and it can become, you know, where you're feeling it and then you're feeling like, oh my goodness, like they're draining life and soul almost. Yeah. Like, it's finding that balance where you're, you're helping someone to acknowledge how they feel if they're offloading, but then you're gearing it towards a positive direction. Like, okay, what did you learn about yourself during lockdown? What new skill did you do? You know, did you take up yoga? Did you do something that you'd never experienced before? So you're gearing and guiding the conversation. So it's not just a big gossip conversation or it's not a heavy conversation. Yeah. But you're listening, but then you're guiding to a different way. So yeah. So that's helpful for you because then you feel more, you know, stable in yourself. Because if yeah. people are just constantly offloading offloading and then you're carrying all this you're carrying it into your next treatments into your next clients so yeah. finding the balance is so important yeah and the thing you were saying as well about like acknowledging um you know in in the moment or whatever how you're feeling like do you think that there is this is just something i've been noticing myself like even there when you said about like asking someone like what did you do during what did you do during lockdown you know the way like there's a bit of an air now out there that like lockdown is over and we're going back to normal um and do you think that like it's like our emotions haven't caught up with that yet and it's important to keep acknowledging that like because i personally think that we're all a little bit still in shock <laughs> and it's like you know the way yeah. As we're going back to normal and there's you you almost feel like you're supposed to be delighted and you're not necessarily yeah. people aren't necessarily feeling that way is it important to keep acknowledging that as you go along that yes it's brilliant yeah. that lockdown is finishing and yes it's brilliant that like you're reopening your business but there's a whole load of other emotions that yeah. are still going on and it's, it's acknowledging before you even start acknowledge look back and see how far you've come so you look back and see what worked well before what didn't work so well before because now it's like a, a new a new sheet you can start afresh with setting new intentions okay before i worked so many hours and i squeezed so many clients in as much as i could Whereas now you need to have that break in between and that break is going to work for you as much as for, for everyone, you know, it's like, because I know myself, I've been guilty of working all hours and you're trying to look after as many people as you can, Yeah. you know, and, and that does catch up with you and it does catch up with your emotions as well. So it's like, okay, so each time in between your client, as you're washing your hands and you're doing your, your prep work for, for your next, check in with your own breath, check in and constantly bring yourself back. So you're acknowledging in the moment and it's not just being brushed under the carpet and building and festering for it to surface at a later time. That you're working with it as you're going through it. And it may take, you know, after each kind of check-in, okay, how am I feeling now? Where is my breath? Was that situation a little overwhelming? Did it feel a bit heavy? How can I, you know, release this out and be prepared for the next client that I'm going to work with and bring joy and happiness? And it's finding positivity in your conversation in your you know yourself so what you, the mood and the attitude that you have you're going to ex exude that out so in checking in first how are you how are you how am i you know and then you can really work with that yeah but checking in and constant so it's not building and festering is the biggest thing yeah, yeah. and then i suppose like along the lines of um you know we're open and it's a whole different you know okay maybe it's not completely different but there's going to be a lot of changes to the yeah. way an open salon um is now compared to before yeah. and you know i hate using that expression the new normal but it's kind of going to be the new normal um and i and you have in a different positive way where you can set the intention you know yeah. where you go okay so i met um I met a salon owner recently and, you know, they're dreading reopening because um, it's just kind of built up where they have a lot of really demanding clients and they could text all hours of night, two or three o'clock in the morning and they want to be treated nine o'clock the next morning and, you know, be in there and then have extra treatments done while they're in. So I was like, okay, what kind of clientele do you want to have going forward? Can, is there a shift that can happen there? They go, okay, and you're going to have 
easeful day that you, your day will flow with ease and, and joy rather than dread and like oh no they're going to want extra things they won't have enough time and you know it's building that overwhelm it's acknowledge that you know in advance you know what clients that you get great joy out of working with and setting that intention to each client that you you work with so that your day is filled with like yeah i really love what i do and it emulates and then you're in a really strong positive place because when the fear comes in or when the overwhelm comes in then your immune system begins to to weaken and lessen and then you're open for any kind of sickness to come in whereas you want to be in a good positive place so that you can manage all the changes and change is good change is good look for the positives in the change it can be you know overwhelming sometimes and people don't like change so much but look in a different way it's really it's a wonderful opportunity to set new new boundaries if before they have been crossed yeah i remember somebody actually years ago saying to me that um in life um change is actually inevitable it's always yeah. going to happen and the trick is uh or it's kind of it's like life is about how you handle the change, not about the change itself, yeah. how you adapt and you, you know, you figure it out as you go along yeah. because you're never going to be able to avoid it. It's always going to be there, you know. Absolutely. Um, Embrace yeah. it. What can I um, learn? How can I grow? <laughs> pardon? Embrace it and have a um, learner's mindset. What can I learn today? How can I grow? How can this be even better than it was before? Exactly. Yeah. 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 What did I learn from that almost? Yeah. Um, and then you had some tips about um, the new salon space, which I thought were very interesting about the the radio and gossip. So do you want to talk me through that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I've worked in salons in the past where, you know, there were the radios blast in the background and the news is on every hour. And it's just, we've felt a lot. And then it was a real gossipy situation where, you know, every conversation was, was gossip or was negative and that's just detrimental to yourself first and foremost and for, you, for your clients as well. So then changing that, if, you're, if you explore the option of playing some like tranquil music or healing music in the background and just see the difference. Does that work better? Maybe you prefer the radio, then you can go back. But at least you've given yourself the option of, of exploring and seeing what works well for you and your clients. You're setting the intention for having a positive environment, positive mindset and a positive interaction with your clients. Because the more positive you are, the more stable and healthy you will be. Um, so yeah, the, the radio, I think definitely the gossiping gear, the conversation to positive, if it begins to come heavy and overwhelming, change it and you can guide that um yeah i think now what else do i have on my list <laughs> oh sorry you had said about um learning balance about what's important to listen to yeah, yeah. The clients to offload um oh yeah you said notice the tipping point notice that tipping point and come back to it yeah. yeah because it is wonderful we all need we all love to be listened to and heard that's one of our greatest things in, in the world to some to actually listen and as therapists we are in that kind of role where people do feel that they can speak to us and offload and and which is fabulous yeah. but finding that balance where they've had that experience of being listened to and heard and then it's going into a positive direction yeah okay um, just before I continue there, I just thought a question came in from somebody watching on Facebook. Now, I don't know if this person is a therapist or a hairdresser, but <laughs> she just wants to know if you have any tips on sore feet because hers are still bad at home. Oh, yes. You must, you must Tennis be ball for your feet. It is so fabulous. So what imagine the result has three lines. I'm going to grab a tennis ball. I'll be right back and I'll show you. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. A tennis ball. So every part of your body is mapped onto your feet. So if you imagine your right foot is the right side of your body, left foot is the left side of your body. Okay, and then imagine your foot has three elements to it, three sections. So underneath your toes, you're not on the toes, you're just on the ball of the foot. So going underneath the big toe on the ball of the foot, you want to steady press your foot in and just roll forward nice and steady you will feel lots of hot spots especially if your feet are tired 
and soar. So acknowledge them, say hello, say thank you, and say goodbye, and roll to the next one. Method in my madness, give this a whirl. I promise you, you will have brand new feet and your back and your shoulders, everything will be amazing. So you're doing a steady roll forward on the tennis ball down the three lines of your foot, okay? And when you stand off the ball at the end, you will feel incredible difference through your whole body. Your back will have eased, your shoulder will have dropped, your knee will have released, all that tension. And you'll be able to feel the difference from one side to the other. So a tennis ball will be your best friend if you have tired, sore feet at the end of the day. And your whole okay, body. So, and it's just a case of like, you're standing on one foot, yep. and the other foot, you're rolling on the, the ball. Yep. So you're standing on, let me see, can I move the camera around and do it for you? Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I definitely tell you to do the, you will love this experience. So yeah, I've to, never heard of this. <laughs> and you say, yep, yeah, place the tennis ball on the floor. So you can hold on to the wall if you need to. Yeah. Underneath the big toe, but you're not on the, on the toe. So you're just gonna really slowly roll forward. You will find some hot spots, so you'll feel tender points. So just hold. So you're saying hello to acknowledge it. You're saying thank you because your body thinks it's in a great service holding this tension. Mm -hmm. And then you both. And then you roll to the next one. So down along the inner arch of your foot. Then you go to the center of your foot and roll down along again. Okay. You're going one direction. It's not a rolling over and back thing. It's just straight forward. Yeah. And then when your toes meet the floor, in front of your heel, there is an arch there. So if you press into that, that release any tension that's trapped in your digestive system as well. So it's really profound. And when you stand down, you'll feel the difference. This foot will feel really light and brighter and the whole right side of your body will too. And then do the other side. So yeah. You'll have to give it a call. <laughs> God, I'll, I'll be going out and buying a tennis ball after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope that answers the question there for uh, that person. Um, I didn't get their name because it came in through through Facebook. Um, and actually, ju just listening to their talking about the feet isn't another one. I just know this myself from yoga um, for tired yeah. legs. Yeah. Um, the kind of the turning your, your legs up. Legs right. up the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And just like literally sitting there and letting, I don't know what what is it that happens when when you stick, when the legs go off? Is it like yeah? You know, it's, quick, it's fabulous, especially if you find that you wake up during the night or you find it really hard to go to sleep. It's one of the best things for balancing out, so you can go to sleep quite quickly. So with the legs up the wall, it's just bringing, um, it's taking down all that tension and it's drawing it out of the legs. Yeah, um, yeah, it brings you into a lovely relaxed state. Yeah, yeah, because I know that when I do yoga, I love that one. I would do it like my legs would be up, and we'd use a belt to hold on to the feet. And yeah. it's just really, it's like it, it sounds like it wouldn't be relaxing, and it really is. It's so relaxing, and it's really supportive, especially when you have the, the belt as well with it. And that's so yeah. humbling, actually. If, if, if you're finding it difficult to sleep, or if you wake up during the night, Come back to your breath, do a couple of rounds of inhale, so, and then elongate those words. So see so in your mind and see all the O's after it and inhale so all the way down to the soles of your feet. Then exhale hum, so it's HMM and then see all the M's and bring it up to the crown of the head. So imagine the breath traveling the whole way through the body so it's not getting stuck. Because anxiety is when your breath is stuck and you can't. Yeah. And um, you can function correctly because everything is concentrated just around um, the chest and this building and the internal organs and things that, um, you know, wouldn't have bothered you before will irritate you now. You'll find um, other signs of anxiety or fear or worry that's building that you may not even be aware of is you begin to come clumsy. You know, you might walk and trip over this kind of the leg of a chair or you're dropping the tweezers or the hairbrush, whatever it is. So if you find that you're becoming clumsy, just check in with your breath. It just means that you're not breathing 
fully. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, uh, Jen just sent that through to me, but that question came in from Linda Tyrrell and she's the hairdresser, so she was talking about her sore feet. Fabulous. She will love I it. Hope, I hope Linda <laughs> goes off now to buy a tennis ball. Um, yeah. Or she might have one at home and tries that one out. Um, that's <laughs> um, so then just my, my last question was just around, you know, I suppose going forward, you know, a certain level of stress is to be expected when everybody gets back. Like, literally everybody gets back to the swing of working life again. I mean, I don't know if we ever feel that yeah. we're completely back to stress is, stress is inevitable. Stress is there always. Yeah. And it's, it's how you handle your stress. You know, and it, you can look at it in a positive way or a negative way where it become overwhelming where it builds and festers or you can go, okay, I'm feeling stressed now. And then just work with it. Is this true? Is this stress that I'm thinking? So we're, we're flip-flopping from back from something that's happened before that you can't go back and change but mm -hmm. you can look back and you can learn from it to go forward or we're in the future thinking of what will happen so yeah. anxiety fear worry, stress is flip-flopping from you know back to forward and it's bringing yourself into the present moment where you have you're, you're feeling in control where the, when you're in both states, you're wanting to control. You want to change something from the past that I should have or would have, could have, or like, I need to have this happen. Yeah. So you're feeling more balanced and you're feeling relaxed and then you feel in control. Yeah. And bring that back is through your breath and just checking in, how do I feel? Is this worry real? Is it true? Is it valid or worthy? You know, does it make me feel good or empowered? Does it make me feel awful and... You know, we worry about things that may never even happen. 99.9% .9 of things that we worry about are not going to happen yeah. anyway. So knowledge in the thought because then you can change it. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's like somebody always says to me, you know, like, uh, deal with the facts. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, as you said, is it real or is it imagined? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's literally yeah, like it's trying to sit down and figure out, like, is this, you know, is this stress or worry or emotion like is it is it real and valid or have you because we're we're human beings and we have a tendency to kind of inflate things in our head until they get yeah. completely yeah yeah, yeah. And and I think you're right. have like seventy thousand thoughts a day who would have oh. thought seventy thousand thoughts a day and if yeah. you're reacting stuff from the past that's a lot of thinking and if you're worried about stuff in the future that's a lot of worry yeah <laughs> so it's like okay is this is this true? Is it kind? Is it valid or worthy? Yeah. Usually the answer. And I like, I remember um, reading, because like there's so much talk these days about, you know, mindfulness and all that, you know, it became very fashionable. Um, but I remember somebody explaining to me that like, almost like the definition of mindfulness is like to literally be in the moment. But I love the bit where it says like, to be in the moment and not judge at the moment. It's yeah. just to, yeah. That like this this is here this is happening and not have it's like someone explained it to me as like you look out the window and it's raining and you don't say i'm looking out the window it's raining the weather's awful you just say it's raining you know exactly yeah, yeah. you acknowledge it's raining and yeah. raining is helpful too we need that too oh know? yeah well we definitely <laughs> we need it now now that we're in a drought <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, listen, that was all. Um, I really mind really going. Helpful. Another thing that actually is just re think of um, your favorite person, your favorite animal, your favorite, you know, something that brings instant joy and happiness to you just by thinking of them. So if you find that you're in, in you know, frustrated, you're angry, you're irritable, there's, you know, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're stressed, think of something that counterbalances that and instantly you'll shift from being feeling overwhelmed, tight and tense to feeling, oh yeah, remember that. Or yeah. just see smile of your you know your loved one in your mind's eye that'll easily take away that tension too yeah so i think um the message is for anybody watching now or listening in or if they watch the video back later on and you know they're looking at you know going back to work in whatever let's say we can have two weeks um but the first yeah. thing really is to like uh to start tomorrow with getting up early you know, no making the bed, getting into <laughs> yeah. the routine and almost like uh, teaching their bodies how to be back yeah. in work. 
Yeah. And that, that will make it easier for when we're, you know, the big day happens. That's it. And being yeah. prepared, you know, having your lunches prepared, having breaks prepared, having your water, you know, so you're prepared and yeah. you're already set with good, nice, nutritious meals as opposed to just running and grabbing something quick. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, it's, it's the case of constantly bringing it back to your breath. Gonna, it's going to be a lot of constant coming back, especially yeah. when you're going to hear so many stories. You know, people are going to come in. Everyone's going to have a completely different experience of lockdown and, and pandemic and fear and worry. And and they will share that with you. So it's yeah. having yourself in a good, stable place. You're like, okay, it's good to have the balance where you're allowing that offload, but it's yeah. not spilling over into something that's yeah. become overwhelming and detrimental. That you yeah. change mindset like okay you know if there was a challenging client that maybe you had before you go oh every time they come in something go just change it okay what are they teaching you how can you you know maybe um maybe now is the time to kind of release the time go may they just go gracefully and create a new space for someone else to come along and actually yeah. that's another thing that, that may be um concern for people sometimes habits and routines have been well and truly broken now so yeah. sometimes they not come back and that's okay too. And that's okay too. Because sometimes we we have more of an attachment to someone else than perhaps they may have with us. And then when yeah. they're not there, or we'll take it personally and it's nothing to do with you at all. It's whatever, you know, it's just life unfolding. Yeah. And that's okay. And that's okay. It yeah. creates space for somebody else to come in as well. So yeah. So having and also like, may you know, maybe a client does is is very is a very fearful person and they don't feel okay in themselves yet to go yeah. back in into the salon and you know yeah. somebody i i read that somewhere recently as well that like when the restrictions started to ease and you know we were all being told that we yeah. were allowed to do different things bit by bit that like we all needed to remind ourselves as well that like everybody dealt with lockdown in a different way and everybody had a different reaction yeah. and that none of us should judge each other about how we're responding to the ease because some people are still too frightened to go to the shop yeah. or to the supermarket and like just because I'm not frightened yeah I do I shouldn't judge the person that's still really anxious yeah. so it's, it's that reminder again to all still be kind to that's one another fear. and not yeah. judge yeah yeah that's it that's you know that that's a very real experience for them yeah. and it may not be reality for you but it is for that person and yeah. to you know to hold space for that that that's okay that that's how they feel and perhaps you can guide them in a more positive direction and help release some of that fear through yeah. your fabulous work and know that what you're doing is amazing you know we have a valuable yeah. vital service that we're doing for our clients you're helping someone feel good about themselves absolutely yeah and that's yeah. huge you know and to hold that and know that that's that's your vital role you know it's yeah. almost like this yeah. sacred duty that we have to help yeah um, okay, we're just coming up to the time there now. So um, I wanted to thank you again for joining us. Um, that was really lovely. You know, it was like completely different to what I normally do on the webinar. So um, it was lovely. Yeah, and I'm loving the smile on your face as well. It's after lighting up. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and obviously, you know, we want to wish you the best of luck with reopening um, whenever that's going to be. I hope you've got your appointment book ready. And yeah, it's uh going to be all go yeah. and hopefully <laughs> yeah so thank you again for joining us and lovely to meet you on screen and um oh sorry i think i've won oh yeah sorry that was just somebody somebody had to log log off in the middle of it they just sent a message um yeah so it was lovely to meet you on screen and um hopefully we'll see you again in person and thanks to everybody that tuned in and we will be back next week with another webinar uh, probably going to be Thursday again at the same time, but just keep an eye on our social during the week because um, we'll be sending out the alert. So until then, thanks again, Jennifer. Thank Bye, you so everyone. much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.